Uh, what we're doing tonight is welcoming a colleague of ours, uh, Renee Seville, who is a wonderful entrepreneur. And she is a young business owner in our community, which is really, really exciting. So, uh, so Renee, welcome to the program. It's great to have you. Yes, thank you. It's great to be here. Before starting a business and going into this world of home care, first you had to choose healthcare as a profession. Mm -hmm. So, you know, tell me about your journey. Um, you know where you're from and and how that began for you. Yeah, so I born and raised in Berkshire County. Um, I don't know anywhere else besides Berkshire County. When we were younger, we used to actually live in an apartment complex in Dalton, and right across, it's actually the River Run Apartments in Dalton. Mm -hmm. So right on the other side of the parking lot is the senior housing, and I would be two, three years old, and I would run up to the window. And I wouldn't be able to say ambulance. It took me forever to be able to say that word. Um, but I would sit up on the couch and I would say, look, mommy, ambulance, ambulance. And like, <laughs> I would watch them get put in and out of the ambulance almost regularly. And I just, for whatever reason, enjoyed seeing people that way. Um, and my mom, she's a nurse. So that was like a really big um, person role model for choosing my career. And then I just kind of really fell into the love of wanting to care for other people. And at first I wanted to actually take care of pediatrics because I used to help take care of my nephews when they were little. Um, and then my geriatric population love grew when my mom was a nurse and she worked in a nursing home. And I would go every Saturday and Sunday and volunteer 10, 11, 12 years old and play bingo with them, um, take them outside, yeah. read books. Um, I loved going there. And then ever since then, I just, the geriatric population grew really close to my heart. Yeah, it, it really is one of those things where, and, and if you have been in this world and working in senior care, there are some buildings that you go into and there'll be certified nursing assistants. And those are the individuals who have the most contact with mm -hmm. residents every day. And they have been doing this work for 20, 25, 30 years. Um, and these people are unbelievably uh, just the compassion mm -hmm. that they have. And, and, and certainly it's something that you really have to love doing yeah. um, to, to make that kind of commitment because it's mm -hmm. not an easy, mm -hmm. easy job. And when I actually started my healthcare career, I started out as a CNA. I was in nursing school. I was in a four-year RNBSN program and I was working full-time while going to school full-time. Um, and I worked at my first, my very first job in healthcare was Sugar Hill Assisted Living. I was a CNA, I had amazing mentors, and it was an amazing first experience. And then I was a CNA for about four and a half years. And then I had gotten my LPN. And in LPN school, I was working full time still as a CNA while going to school for my LPN because, you know, life happens and I didn't stay in that <laughs> four year RN program. <laughs> Um, and so then I graduated at the very top of my class in the LPN program and worked full time in, uh, at Mount Carmel care center. Great building. Yes, it really is. Um, I worked there for about a year and a half in the height of COVID and I was working full time and had gotten my RN graduated in the top 10 of my RN class. Um, and that's when I kind of grew out of the nursing home and went into the hospital and I quickly realized the hospital was not my ideal setting it because is so, it's so different. Yes. Yes. And you don't get that connection with your patients like you do. You don't get time with them and the ages are all different. And my population passion is truly the geriatric population. And, you know, that's coming and going in all different ages in the hospital. Right. Yeah, and Cara, I mean, there is not one family who has not been impacted by aging right. family members. Uh, either uh, they require home care or a nursing home, um, and and you know, in some cases, assisted living. I think my grandmother have. was at Mount Carmel for a little while mm -hmm. until she could find a spot at Kimball Farms. I think is where she yeah. was. Can't completely remember, but she passed away in 2018, I believe. Mm -hmm. She was in her 90s so yeah 
it was important for us to find Absolutely. a nice place for her. And it was important to her too. Mm-hmm. And the differences can be, and I think it's that personal aspect. And you know, I think when it comes to who cares for your loved one, you really want not only someone who has experience, not only someone who has compassion uh, and, and care, but you know, someone you can trust. And I think all of this is really you know, part of the conversation of why you started your business, you know, because we were talking before the podcast and I've been in this industry for a long time. So I kind of know a little bit more than most. Um, and so you have a very clear philosophy on how you are approaching your business, the, the, the home care business. Yes, absolutely. So I feel as though one of the biggest things that really r- represent our business, it kind of separate us from some of the other bigger agencies that we have in the Berkshires is that we are locally owned and operated. You know, a lot of these other businesses that we have in here, they're fantastic, but they're large chains, corporations. So the people aren't necessarily versed in what these clients of theirs need necessarily. Um, Whereas I'm an RN, I own the business and I know firsthand exactly what my clients need and what they don't need and what they would benefit most from. Um, And when I make their plan of care, I know exactly day to day what they are going to need and the best thing to thrive in their home environment and stay in their comfort of their home as long as possible. Um, definitely being a CNA has also helped me because I understand that the CNAs are really the, the huge pivotal aspect to our healthcare society without them, really, you have no business, um, because there's the ones doing all the dirty work per se. Um, they're the ones putting in the long hours, doing all the direct care. You know, they're the ones who get beaten on, you know, metaphorically (laughs) from families and, you know, other people in their, in those clients' lives that are meaningful to them. Yeah. And and to be honest, I mean, sometimes it's not metaphorically. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, And especially, you know, and and listen, you know, let's be honest about it. When um, individuals are especially going through dementia, Mm -hmm. you see changes, you see behavioral changes and things like that, that can uh, make it a very difficult, uh, job, the CNA position, mm-hmm. the, the health aid, those LPNs and RNs, um, who are providing direct care. You know, I can't think of, uh, anything that is more, uh, critical for families yeah, absolutely. And, and having that. We are a non-medical home care agency. We provide our services throughout Berkshire County. So we provide personal care. So some examples of that would be, you know, dressing, bathing, grooming, ambulation. We provide light housekeeping. So no, we don't mow your yard or rake your leaves, (laughs) but we will do some vacuuming and sweeping, you know, meal preparation, dishes, any, you know, day-to-day tasks that may be a little more challenging for some of our seniors. And then we also provide provide companionship. So a lot of that is for the safety of, say, somebody who has a loved one with dementia and they have to go to work throughout the day and they're scared to leave their loved one home alone because they could walk out the door or, you know, turn on the oven and forget it's there. Um, So we provide the companionship mostly just kind of to build a friendship with those clients um, so they're not alone during the day. And a lot of them love that. And then one other thing that we provide that no other home care agency in our area that provides is we have a van that provides transportation. And our goal with the van was to provide medical appointment transportation outside of Berkshire County. Now, we all know that transportation in our area we lack, and Mm -hmm. we especially lack the ability to move outside of Berkshire County. Um, I know CRT and some of the other um, cabulance services will go as far as Springfield. Um, However, we have a 500-mile radius. Mm -hmm. So we have a schedule. Um, A lot of people kind of deviate from the schedule, but that's okay because we try to accommodate people as best as possible. And we can go to Boston, we go to Springfield, we go to Worcester, we go to Albany, we've gone to Connecticut. And we have actually brought several people to like life-threatening um, specialty appointments outside of Berkshire County. Um, for example, we had one lady who needed to go to Brigham and Women's for a cancer treatment, um, and there was no other way for her to get there. No one else would provide this critical treatment that she needed, and it was kind of like a one-time thing, very last minute. 
they called us up they you know were crying and they said hey i know that wednesday you go to boston but it's tuesday i don't know what to do you know we had the van available for that day so we were able to take her you know very last minute and we brought her to that treatment and she couldn't be more thankful if yeah, she possibly that's wonderful could try and it was an amazing feeling knowing that we are one of the transportation services you know even though it's included in the home care you know it's still something that's available mm -hmm. and the great thing is it's not available only to our clients but it's available to the community so whether you're a client or not you have a loved one who needs to go to bay state for a cardiac appointment you know please call up whole heart and we will try yeah. our best to transport you. That's fantastic. Yeah, uh, it really is. And I think that's accommodating for the real and responding to the real issues that are right here. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, more businesses, you know, ought to be creative like that yeah. uh, in a lot of ways because uh, we're unique here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there isn't great transportation here. Right. There isn't an opportunity for people to easily hop on a bus or even get an Uber. Um, you know, if it's someone who doesn't have, um, uh, disabilities, you know, you know, mm -hmm. the physical challenges, that sort of thing. And of course, then there's the, um, you know, other services, but, uh, but they're limited, uh, to a, a great extent. So being able to provide that, that's just, I mean, I hate to say thinking outside the box is trite, right. uh, sometimes when we say that, but, but it truly is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just another service that we've been able to provide. Um, we are a private pay agency. So unfortunately, the van services are also private pay. However, the prices are very accommodating. Um, when people give us a phone call, they can't believe that, you know, round trip is included in mileage and wait time, you know, because typically if CRT brings them everything, you know, is an additional charge, whereas one is ours is one charge and it makes it more accommodating financially for the seniors who are already struggling financially in our community. Um, and we can take long term care insurance for our services that we provide for our clients. So that is one great thing because they're spending so much money into these long term care insurances and then eventually they get put to good use when it's needed. Yeah. And um, which is good to hear because I, you know, we've also heard over the years how sometimes people have been maybe surprised uh, whether or not long term care will cover some things. Um, the other thing is, I know that at one point uh, they bumped up uh, across the board and I think the Commonwealth of Massachusetts made the insurance companies do this. They had to bump up the premiums because mm -hmm. the back end cost uh, was becoming so high that the premiums and, and the insurance companies were were defaulting um, at one point. So, uh, so people are paying a good price mm -hmm. for those premiums uh, over the years. And uh, so it needs to be you know, used uh, properly, sure. Yeah, absolutely. If you pay in your family and you pay a home care agency to take care of mom or dad, you're paying a certain hourly rate. Mm -hmm. And that hourly rate is probably pretty high. I mean, I mean, depending on, on the agency and, and the services being provided. Um, but then there's a difference between what that rate is and then what the actual caregiver is making. So, you know, what is that gap? And then people understand, okay, if they talk to the caregiver and maybe the caregiver probably shouldn't tell them what they're making, <laughs> but anyway, uh, we'll, we'll put that aside. But, uh, but if the, the bigger that gap is, um, that is something to think about because, you know, uh, the rate that someone is working for it may reflect on the quality of care, uh, that that their loved one is receiving. Absolutely agreed. So staffing, like you said, is a huge issue that a lot of people have faced here um, and not just here, pretty nationwide. Um, but one of the things that I really like to let my staff know and my my clients and their families is that to me, it's not about the money. It's really about the quality of care that they're receiving and they deserve to have the best care that anyone can provide for them. They deserve that. And so granted, our business is still a baby. You know, it's two and a half years old at this point. Uh, <laughs> That's two and a half years longer than many people have ever had the guts to yeah. be. You know what Thank I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, but with that being said, you know, we have decided to charge our clients in the community less than the bigger agencies that we are competing against. Um, and yes, that does take a financial backlash on our business in terms of its growth. But if we're paying our employees a really great pay because of the care that they're providing to our seniors, then to me, it's worth 
losing a few dollars from my paycheck to give them a good paycheck for everything that they're doing for our seniors. Um, I do pay uh, my employees more than some of the other agencies in the area. So that's one thing that we have different also with the other bigger agencies is we're not looking for a dollar sign. We're looking for, you know, them to stay in their home as long as possible. You know, what is going to keep them safe and healthy and clean and sanitary? And my staff are held to a very high standard. You know, we background check everybody. And then after that, they go through um, a training process with me and my manager, who's an LPN. And we expect them to be on time. Um, don't you know, leave when you say you're supposed to be there. We have an app that tracks their location so they can't just, yeah, it is. So they can't just say that they're there and really not there. I got to tell you, uh, you know, Cara wanted to put one of those on me. Oh, uh, yeah, right. uh, uh, oh, 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 no. Come on. Oh, That's funny. That's it funny. is funny. Oh, wait, wait, you put a GPS on um, <laughs> People that, that do that. Oh, really? Sure, okay. But, yeah, yeah. Let's, hey, listen, if you're, if you're, doing what you got to do and you're doing it right, then you know, yeah. that's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're looking at the long term because Absolutely. if you're looking at that whole amount of revenue coming in and the whole volume coming in, you know, many people could be looking at that and saying, geez, like I could really, you know, make a lot here. And if I shave a little here, I could make more put in my pocket. But what you're doing is literally taking less in your pocket to sort of build uh, the business. And then, you know, if you have loyal workers yes, yes. and that, and you're, that's what you're really developing, that's really working for the long term. Yeah. And our, you know, our goal is to be a very successful agency, just like everybody else. You know, we want to have the care for as many clients in the community as safely as possible, but, and I would love to grow and I would love to continue this journey. However, my growth, I want it to be very, you know, short. I don't want it to get big too quick because when you allow it to get too big too quick is when the quality of care decreases. And if we're able to, you know, slowly by slowly raise the amount of clients that we have in our, you know, business bucket per se, then that's great. You know, I don't want it to get to a point where these people are not having a caregiver available when there's a call out or when the client is unsafe at home because I don't have enough employees to staff, but it just looks better in my pocket saying that I have 24 clients as opposed to 15. And even though I'm taking a financial hardship to that, the clients are the ones who are reaping the benefits of it. Right. And ultimately that's the most important. Being a small business owner and we're, and we're all small business owners here. Uh, it takes guts and I want mm -hmm. Cara to weigh in on this too, because, you know, <laughs> because Cara, you know, recently left uh, her position as a teacher yeah. uh, to, to do this and, uh, and be a small business owner. So, um, you know, it, Tell me about that loop yeah, a little it's, bit. I mean, you you make that decision and it's not, you know, you don't, it takes a lot to make that decision. It took me a few years to really come to grips with the fact that I, I wasn't going to be able to, to dive into my business full time. You know, I, I was teaching and teaching takes up a lot of time. Um, and so I made that, I finally made that decision, but it's a lot of work. And sure you is. have to, you, you know, it's like 24 seven, um, in a way, you know, and, uh, but it's definitely in a person's soul yes, for sure to want to be an entrepreneur. Um, and you're constantly learning and you're constantly, um, trying to think of innovative ways to serve your clients and, um, you know, and it's a lot of fun too. So it is very hard to leave a a job that you've been doing yeah. for so long that you're so passionate about, um, leaving nursing full time, you know, doing the direct patient care, I should say was extremely hard for me in the beginning. And for the first two years of the business, I allowed myself to completely not work. I did nothing but eat, breathe, sleep business 24 seven. And it is really a great analogy that your business is your baby. 
because yeah. every little milestone that that business makes, it feels like the most rewarding mm-hmm. thing that you could ever be going through. And each day when the business does something bigger, or better, or we get a new client or we get a new client testimonial, or we have a new com- community referral from somebody saying how you know great of the care that we're performing for their neighbor and just thank you. Like those little things make every part so worth it. And, but, you know, financially, you know, that's something that we all are trying to focus on in our life. And so the business, you know, like we've mentioned, I have taken a full-time job in addition to the full-time business job, Mm -hmm. um, just so that I could financially help continue to make the business grow slowly while also, loving my business and the clients that I take care of for my own business and being the own manager, you know, perspective that I want to be for everyone. In addition to doing the direct patient care and practicing my nursing skills at the same time. And it has been rough to say the least on my (laughs) sleep cycle, but it has been extremely worth it and rewarding. And I've gotten to a point where I don't need to do this this uh, other full-time job at the moment because I want to focus on the continual small growth of the business and everything that we can offer to the community. that, That is a cool place to be. Were you nervous uh, to come on the show? I was very nervous. You know, any opportunity that I can talk about my business, I love it because, you know, we are still new. So a lot of people are still learning about the name of the business out in the community. Um, And I love the business. You know, there's really nothing more that I could imagine myself doing. And the thing is, I went for a nursing career. I didn't go for a business degree. So the fact that I am loving doing the business aspect while doing the nursing aspect Mm -hmm. is it's kind of metaphorical. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I love it. And um, I, I think I was mostly nervous because if I make a mistake, you can't edit it. <laughs> well, and then you notice that I <laughs> we can edit for the, we yep. can edit for, great. We can edit for the great. version after, just not the live uh, version because yeah. uh, we're pretty live here. Um, it's about as live as it gets. Um, but, uh, you know, looking at that, it's really easy, you know, because you know, talking about this whole thing, talking about your business, it's really, really easy to talk about something you're passionate about. And I can tell you, I've interviewed a lot of people and you can tell the people who are passionate about what they do. And those are easy interviews because not only do people know what they're talking about because they're so passionate about it, therefore they know the details, but it just emanates. So I think uh, you're there uh, with that. So yeah. do as many interviews as you possibly can. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can't cause... tell you're nervous at all. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. So uh, Lynn fisher Knoll says, Renee, do you hire part-time workers? So yes, we hire per diem part-time and full-time. All right. So there you have that. Chris Gregory says, Renee took care of my mother's uh, uh, while she was still at home. She's great. Uh, so uh, Chris got, got some kudos from Hi, Chris, <laughs> uh, from Chris uh, Gregory and uh, Dolores Wright says congratulations on, uh, on everything. So at some point, um, you know, you begin to really develop a, a reputation. I mean, word, word of mouth is so important here in the Berkshires. And I, I'm pretty sure that it's important everywhere. I, we just know the Berkshires really yeah. well. Um, that you can advertise, you can do this, you can do that. But at the end of the day, uh, most people are really going to simply take a recommendation. I mean, you can see a newspaper ad, a a digital ad, a TV ad, but most people will say, oh, you know what? Sally, uh, her mom was uh, at a nursing facility. Which one did she choose? And like, you know, and and that's Mm -hmm. usually how it works. Yeah, absolutely. So I know we've done different advertisements, you know, in the Berkshire Eagle, and it's really hard to tell how many people are seeing it. You know, the, if people are really noticing the ads, no matter what size, you know, Mm -hmm. ad in the page that you get, you pick and pay for. Um, But the thing that has been extremely beneficial to us being a small local business is word of mouth. Um, If we go into a nursing home and the the good thing for me is because I've worked in so many facilities, people know me just by having a good reputation in their facility when I worked with them and knew that I was so passionate about what I was doing and that I would always put the client care before anything else. Um, So that's always had a kind of a little upper hand on me. 
Um, but definitely, you know, having our Facebook page and seeing family members mm -hmm. or friends of loved ones um, comment on there and just talk about how, the great things that we've done for their loved one or the great things that we've done in the community. Like recently we had the big community luau um, yeah. about a Nota Lake and okay. everybody loved that. There was so many people talking about how great that was and how it was an amazing experience to be able to learn about a new home care agency. But and also you hosted that? Yes, we That's did. Fun. Yes. That's great. A few weeks ago up at a Nota Lake and we had about 60, 70 people, which wow. is incredible. Um, because we had our one year anniversary party and we probably had 20 or 30 people. So the fact that we're just continuing to grow and just because people in the community said, Hey, I know this great girl who has a, a home care agency and she's yeah. trying to do the best she can for the seniors and give them as many great thing resources for the community. You know, it's it's really incredible when people are saying great things about me and my staff, you know, because mm -hmm. then we're really noticing like those specific comments from our community that we are doing what we should and we are right where we need to be. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's really special. <laughs> Tell me about that conversation when you first get the referral and, and, and I will, you know, having worked as a, as a liaison for healthcare in the community, th those direct referrals from home care, uh, from health care agencies, you know, sometimes it's nursing facilities, sometimes mm -hmm. it's directly from the hospital, et cetera, et cetera. You know, those are the most important referrals and, and the most important things in healthcare uh, for sure. Um, so you get that referral. Tell me about that conversation with the family member. And I, I think there's percentages out there that many, many high percentage of these individuals are usually the eldest daughter, if there is a daughter. Mm -hmm. um, that's usually who you're having the conversation with um, when it comes to uh, providing care for mom or dad uh, or, or grandma or, or grandpa. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, tell me how that goes. So honestly, it's sometimes not even family members who will call and mm -hmm. we're require information or request information about our services. Um, sometimes it's a, uh, it's a neighbor, um, or a cousin's friend that are even related to the family. Mm -hmm. Um, but they've heard of us and they want to know information. And sometimes it's really hard for family members to accept that their loved ones need care or that the loved one's health is declining and they definitely need that extra, a bit of assistance. So sometimes it actually has to take somebody who's removed from the situation to call and get information about our services. Um, the funny thing is when people call and request information about the services, one of the <laughs> first things that I hear from pretty much everyone is, you sound so young. Are you even <laughs> old enough to have a business? And it's, it's really funny because, you know, I, I do sound really young and I am young, but my heart is How old where are you? it needs to be. If you don't mind me asking. Am I able to ask you that? Yeah. Is that improper? I mean, I'm young, so yeah. it's, okay. it's okay. But yeah. um, I just turned 28. <laughs> so I started the business right. right when I, I was like 25 when we really started the the process to get it up and going and 26 when we first to launched. Start a business, though. When, yeah. when, when we had the restaurant, I was early 30s. Mm-hmm. 31, 32. So yeah, it was all or nothing. Yeah. I mean, I, I had, like yeah. I said, no business background. And, you know, I originally started the business with um, a business partner who did have the business background. Mm -hmm. So having the business background and the nursing background, we thought that we would be able to make the greatest business. Um, but as a lot of people no, sometimes you can't be in business with everyone who you think you can. Right. Um, right. Yep. So in November of 2023, the business came entirely mine. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm the sole owner operator of yep. the business. Great. Yeah. Yep. That happens. That yeah. happens. Um. And you're. In fact, I I've experienced something similar to that. Uh. You know, my business originally was a partnership, and uh. You know, we agreed ultimately to part ways just because you know lives were changing. Uh, and opportunities were changing and, uh, yeah, sometimes that just happens. So, uh, but you needed to get there and maybe it, it, you needed that initial confidence Absolutely. of someone else to start it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but once you were in it, you were in it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yes, That's amazing. It's, it's been a great journey. Now, you were what? How old were you with the business? It was I, was, uh, I think I was like 30, between 30 maybe 31. And then I was 34 when we closed. So yeah, but I was, you know, it was, I had 
a lot more energy then I feel like for <laughs> certain things, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just, I was way more of like a people pleaser back mm-hmm. then, which kind of isn't the best thing when you own a restaurant, but I've kind of grown up and like, there's a lot of excess energy that goes into people pleasing. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of wasted energy. Yeah. And when you're, in, when you own a business like a restaurant or whatever, you can't please everyone. No, nope. you just can't, you know? So that took a lot of my energy. I think now if I went back and did that, it would look a lot different. Well, the other thing is you are smarter. Now, yeah. now some people are very smart when they're young, like look at Renee or she's, you know, she's with near 28 and you know, you have to get it. But like, I think that's something that does come with experience is that just utilizing your energy more yeah. intelligently mm-hmm. because when you're, you know, often when you're young, you just think you can take on the world right? and you just, and then next thing you know, I mean, you were exerting a ton of energy, a ton of time, maybe, but you know, maybe not refining it right. quite as much. Right. Is that? Yeah. Is that? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. I think so. Maybe. So our website is wholehearthc, as in homecare.com. And we try and keep it up to date with as many things as we can. But sometimes the website kind of gets pushed off to the side with all the other yeah. major things that we're trying to juggle throughout the day. Very understood. Very understood. I mean, listen, you know, that, that's definitely not the first and foremost on people's minds all the time is managing a website. But as long as the, you know, as long as the basics are there for sure. Yes. So you do have an office right now. It's uh, downtown. Maybe, maybe you're going to move one day uh, at some point. Yeah, that would be nice. So <laughs> <laughs> right now we are very central to Pittsfield. So we are at 150 North Street, Suite 25. So if anybody's familiar with North Street, it is in the Shipton building on the second floor. Um, and we do have an office number and our work mobile phone that I am carrying with me and answering until all hours of the night. So how does that work? Yeah. Uh, so, cause I, I, it was funny. I was, I was meeting with you and I said, Oh, who, who does your, who does your scheduling? <laughs> <laughs> cause I'm used to home, you know, there's, yeah. there's someone who's dedicated to scheduling, but you, you, you probably do a lot of that yourself. I do. So 90% of the things that need to get done in the business, um, <laughs> I'm managing. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I've been able to delegate a lot to my LPN, who's, you know, my manager full time, who helps me out during the day. She's incredible, you know, very well versed in mm-hmm. home care and what needs to be done for our clients. Um, but she she does a lot of, you know, the invoicing. She helps me with some of the marketing events. Um, she helps with a lot of marketing, different ideas mm-hmm. that could help us. She helps with a lot of the client admissions. Um, so pretty much any of the manager roles she's able to help me with. Um, I do have a scheduler who is, you know, she works pretty much part time. Um, you know, she has two little kids at home. So it's not the easiest job for her to be able to manage full time when they're all over her all day. Yeah. Um, but she does great too. You know, she's always there. The three of us have a group text and I don't think that everything stops going off 90% of the time because we're all trying to communicate with each other yeah. and make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. And then, you know, over time, you know, you may find some efficiencies, uh, at, you know, at some point, you know, with those different software or what have you, but, uh, but that all happens with, you know, with growth and, Absolutely. and being able to intelligently scale, um, if you're able to, to do that. And I think that's the real, <laughs> that's the real the key thing that I, people used to call, you know, and it's completely different for your business, but people used to call me to schedule appointments and mm-hmm. they would message me in messenger, call my phone number, text me, whatever. And I couldn't keep it straight. So I finally put Calendly on my website. And so people go in, it has mm-hmm. to be 24 hours in advance and yeah. there's a little message that they get. And then it goes directly onto my calendar. So it's like amazing. Yeah, my yeah. Google Calendar is kind of all over the place. <laughs> um, it's not the easiest to manage most days, but you know, yeah, we're we're getting there. And you know, the app that we use for you know monitoring employees clocking in and out and the hours, you know, it does include the scheduling app on there too, which is great. We can manage the schedule that way. Um, but one of the things that I do know that's difficult is our employees pick and choose which one of the managers they're going to talk to that day. So then the three of us are always trying to say, oh, yeah, this one said this and this one said yeah. that. But they said this to me. So that is definitely uh, an issue of the future that needs to be yeah. ironed out in a more efficient manner. But, you know, for right now, it works. And, uh, yeah. you know, we'll just keep doing what works until we have the ability to grow and do something that works even better, you know, more efficiently. But. Anytime 
you know, that all takes money. And that's the best thing about business. It's always evolving. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. So there's always a new challenge. Yes. <laughs> uh, especially as you grow, uh, you know, because yeah. everybody wants growth, but at the same time, it's like, okay, well, that presents a whole other mm-hmm. level of But I think you're challenge. doing it in a smart way. Trying. Really. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, a gradual, gradual progression. And mm-hmm. yeah. And then on that, so uh, we had a question about, you know, people working part-time per diem, et cetera, et cetera. So what, you know, what would you say to caregivers out there who may be interested in working for your agency um, and, you know, having a conversation with you, what, what would you, uh, what would you want to say to them? So one of the things that we can accommodate really well for our caregivers is they have the ability to pretty much create their own schedule. Um, And I know a lot of people in home care say that, you know, create your own schedule. But what we do for our clients is we, when we do the admission, we allow them to choose the days Mm -hmm. and times that work best for them. And then once we know what's going to work best for the family and for the client, then we schedule a caregiver to go in there. So we constantly have a caregiver available because they all have such a wide availability with their own personal schedules, with their kids, with their school, with their other jobs, you know, life basically. And Mm -hmm. we allow them to, you know, still be able to work for something that they could be passionate about if it's home care, if it's geriatric population, you know, whatever it may be, but also still maintaining Mm -hmm. their life outside of work. And that's, I think, one thing that a lot of employees other places struggle with is that employers don't understand that you have a life outside of work. Work is not right. what you are dead. Like you're not, you didn't draw, like sign your name in blood when right. you're, you know, applying. <laughs> and I feel like people need <laughs> yeah. to like understand that. Like, yeah. you know, I am somebody who's been employed in many different places And I know that like I have my business outside of my work. And if you can't understand that that's my priority, then, you know, I'm still. And and that also means, yeah, it also means, hey, when I'm off of work, I'm off of work. Right. Exactly. Uh, I'm not working, you know, so don't email me. Right. (laughs) You know, and and obviously some positions are are different. And if you're a business owner, well, gosh, then all bets are off because, you know, you you got to do what you got to do. But if you're an employee for a company, um, you know, I think we've over over the years have really pushed this culture of just, you know, working, you know, to, to the grindstone and not respecting time off right. and slowly what that was I doing every Sunday morning, bright and early. What were you doing? Or uh, not lesson doing. plans. No, not doing. Oh, oh, you <laughs> my email. Oh, email. Oh, the right. email. Remember right. the so, email. That's the thing. Like when you, <laughs> when you're, really when you're direct, <laughs> you know, we call it in the business, your direct report. Um, is messaging you on a Sunday, preparing you for your Monday morning, you know, I don't think that's okay. Yeah. You know, because, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's so last day of the weekend. Yeah. So I had to train myself to yeah, not look at it <laughs> until Monday morning. Yeah. 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 It'll be nine o'clock at night. And I'm like, Renee, get rid of your email. I can wait until morning. Like you yeah. need sleep. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. You, you, <laughs> you get yeah. attached to like the, you know, your texts or your emails and it's not healthy, but like, yeah. that's just what you get accustomed to doing. Cause you don't want to miss a single thing. You yeah, want it yeah. to be just right all the time. And I would say, I would always check my email. If a parent emailed me mm-hmm. or a student emailed me, I was on it. Yeah. It didn't matter when, mm-hmm. but otherwise no, yeah. it could wait. If it wasn't a parent or a student, it could wait. And I think it's also important to recognize that when the owner is a caregiver, you know, and no disrespect to people who are managers and in working in all different levels of, of healthcare. But when you have someone who literally right now is providing care to people, in addition to being a manager and owner of a home care agency, I think that, I, you know, I think that gives some real great credibility there because you're, you're still doing that every single day <laughs> yep. in addition uh, to, to running the building. So running the business. So, um, you know, I think that, is a different dynamic than in some cases where, you know, I mean, a lot of great people, mm-hmm. you know, but there are managers in a lot of healthcare companies who 
have never provided direct care yeah. uh, before. No, no disrespect. I yeah. I have yeah. a lot of clients and their families say to me, oh my God, Renee, I've seen you more times this week than the caregiver. And that's because if there's vacations or there's call outs because people are sick or their kids are sick, I will be the first one mm -hmm. there. You know, my client deserves to have the hours and the care that they are paying for. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I will be there to provide that care. And I have never... Because I think I started out as a CNA, being an RN, I worked my way up the you know mm -hmm. healthcare ladder basically, and I have never felt as though just because I'm an RN anything is looked down upon. You know, right. CNAs are so critical to mm -hmm. any business, in my opinion. And uh, I will work as a CNA, and I'll enjoy right. every second of it, whether I'm working as the CNA or the RN for the day. You know, it's it's what you got to do for for the business, I guess. Yeah. Nothing scares me at this point. Yeah, you know, being a nurse, I, yeah. I could watch. So Clara will watch the like you'll these TikToks. <laughs> Look over at me, and it'll be and like, like, um, I don't know, like carving off like something off of a toe or something. Yeah, or like getting like you know, yeah. there's a ingrown hair. The ingrown foot doctor. Hair. Sometimes I watch the foot doctor. I love or those videos popper. where they get the earwax out of the ear. Yes, yes, like, yes. yes. So <laughs> Yeah, he'll look over and I'm like, what in the world yeah. <laughs> is on your algorithm on TikTok? <laughs> like, I don't want to enter into your algorithm. I don't yeah. know. No, but uh, hey, listen, hey, different strokes for different. Yeah. You know, um, it is what it is. So did it <laughs> <laughs> I've been <never> <laughs> It's the blend. <laughs> Welcome to the Are blend. Are you laughing at me? <laughs> Renee's like this too. So funny. Different strokes for different. <laughs> oh, oh, man. God. So, well, on that, um, <laughs> um, hey, love you, everybody. Uh, again, it's, you're great the, it's great to be back. And, and, you know, I think, you know. We are um, in the process of moving everything from Crawford Square over to the uh, 222 professional building. We probably won't be ready for, I don't know. Yeah. Next Tuesday. We, the, yeah. Probably be another two weeks. I would yeah, say. You still have to figure out internet over there, but, yeah. um, but so Renee, uh, thank you so much. No, and it you. is uh, whole heart HC. Whole heart HC. And just Google it. Uh, it's also there. So whole heart HC.com and, uh, Renee Seville, uh, a great pleasure having you. Um, thank you. you know, we love introducing, uh, new incredible people to the community and our community here. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm, I'm just really happy for you, uh, you because, you know, it's just, I've known this, I know this business very well and, uh, and your approach to it is really smart. And I think it's going to be a huge success, uh, over time and it is already, but, um, but I think, uh, over time it's, it's going to be, uh, wonderful and you'll be you'll be doing well. So, uh, so we wish you the best. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. So everyone have a wonderful evening. Have a great and, night. And thanks for tuning in. Bye.